Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet, and this is basically the continuation of last video where we are looking into Spring Retry. In the last video, we have seen how we can enable Spring Retry and how we can make use of enable retry annotation, retryable annotation, recovery annotation. We have seen max attempts, we have seen back off as well. So we have seen multiple things basically. And we have understood how proxy actually comes into picture and how AOP actually comes into picture when we make use of Spring Retry. But in this video, we are going to dive deep inside the internals of how it works. And we are going to cover the internal working of Spring Retry in this particular video. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be another fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. All right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda. This is going to be a simple agenda basically. Spring Retry in the last video, we have seen all this. We have seen what exactly is Retry. We have seen the use cases. We have seen how we can enable Spring Retry. After that, we have seen Retryable annotation. We have seen Retry and back of config. We have seen the recover method as well. In this video, we will just go ahead and see the internal working of Spring Retry basically. And if you remember, this is basically the code we have seen in the last video. This is basically the configuration that we have used. We have enabled this particular retry. Before that, we have added a couple of dependencies over here. Spring retry, spring aspect. After that, from this particular controller, we have this particular service where we have implemented retryable. We have annotated this particular class where we are simulating that the API is down and throwing this particular exception. Here we have made use of retry for in which we have added runtime exception. After that, we have given max attempts for. After that, we have given back off where we have given delay as two seconds. We have added multiplier as well. It will just multiply before each retry. After that, we have made use of a recovery method by using recover annotation. So if all the attempts are failing, it will just go ahead and call this particular method. So that is basically something we have seen in the last video. So if I just go ahead and run this particular code, let's see what happens. And if I just go to my postman and send this particular request then you will see that it is basically going ahead and retrying in this case it will just go ahead and retry for this particular amount of time multiplied by this particular multiplier so it will go to eight seconds in the last attempt and at the end it will just return us this particular recovery method so all these things we have seen in the last video so if you are yet to check that particular video just go ahead and check it out we have also seen that after enabling retry it creates a proxy and how that proxy might look like we have seen this particular pseudo code let me just bring that up as well if you see over here this is kind of a pseudo code we have seen in the last video just to understand and just to clear a picture how it might work right it is not the actual code actual thing we are going to look into this particular video so let's go back over here and let's get started with the internal working of ring retry if I go back over here and scroll down over here, then this is basically the actual working. So once we fire our API, it will come to controller, right? After that, it will go to our CGLIB proxy, right? Once it reaches our proxy, then what proxy will do? Proxy will delegate the request to retry interceptor. So there will be a retry operation interceptor. Now retry interceptor is basically a AOP interceptor. So the main job of this particular guy is that if the method is marked with retryable annotation, the call should not directly go to that particular method in the service. Rather than it will just go ahead and make an invoke call and it will delegate the request to retry template. Now once the call comes to this particular retry template, it will just run a loop. Right? What it will do, it will first call this particular method in the service. After that, if the exception comes, it will have this particular back off and retry policy. It will extract it from our annotation. So if you see over here, this particular retryable annotation, it will have this particular max attempts and back off policies. So it will extract it and it will have details of all these basically. So it will first go ahead and check if we can retry based on this. So it will first check if the maximum attempt is done, right? It will first check if the maximum attempt is done. So it is only the first attempt by now. So it, what it will do, it will just go ahead and proceed. After that, back off will come into picture. So once we check that we can retry, it will just wait for this particular amount of time before retrying because we need to wait, right? And how it will wait? It will just hit that particular thread dot sleep, nothing else basically. It will just wait over here. Once the wait is done, it will just go ahead and call that particular method. So this loop will just go ahead and keep on retrying at the end. 
once this particular max attempt is done what it will do it will check if any recovery method is present over here if any recovery method is present it will just go ahead and call that particular recover method otherwise it will just go ahead and throw that particular exception so that is basically your entire flow now i just walk through it but now we will just go ahead and run our application inside debug mode and let's see what exactly happens behind the scene so our application is already running in a debug mode so let's see what happens so now i will just go ahead and hit this particular request let's see what happens then you will see that our first call landed on annotation aware retry operation interceptor so this is nothing but the retry interceptor we are talking about so now if i go back to threads and variables then if i go to threads over here then you will see that here we have a retry controller after that external api service spring cglib proxy comes into picture which is basically this cglib proxy after that it is delegating the request to this particular annotation aware retry operations interceptor after that here it is just checking if this particular method have any annotation on it so it will just find that particular delegate so if you see over here it found that there is this retry operation where they have this particular back of policy where we will have this particular back of interval and this particular multiplier and max interval is basically this particular default value after that it found that it has a maximum attempt as well maximum attempt is basically 4 over here and it also found that it also have a recover method right this is basically the recover method over here and the recover method basically works on this particular runtime exception so it found that it also have a recover method as well so all these things it found so if delegate is not equal to null what it will do it will invoke that particular delegate otherwise it will just go ahead and directly invoke your method so that is basically the job of this guy it will check if your method have spring retry specific annotation like recover or your retryable annotation then it, it will just go ahead and call your invoke method now once it do it will just delegate the request to retry template so if we proceed over here then you will see that we are landed inside this particular retry template now retry template will have this particular execute method in, inside which it will have a do execute method and here if you see we should have a loop so if i scroll down then you will see that it will have this kind of a while loop over here right so it is a kind of a big while loop where it is doing a lot of stuff basically right so this particular loop ends over here but now before that let's see what exactly it is doing in do execute so let's try to proceed over here so first it extracted retry policy after that it extracted back off policy so if i hover on this you will see that there is this retry policy that maximum attempts are four after that it has back off policy as well that there is this particular delay this is multiplier this is max interval and stuff right so it found everything basically so that is when you have this particular back off policy and retry policy with retry template so this is basically your retry policy and back off policy basically now it will just do its groundwork and it will just directly go ahead and jump into your while loop so there we go this is basically the while loop and inside this particular while loop it will first check if it can retry it will first check if it can retry based on your retry policy and context and remember this context also contains this particular back off because this particular back off is set inside this particular context so it will also check the wait time as well that we will see how it will check so it will first check if we can retry right so this is basically can retry method right can retry it will check for that particular retry policy and that particular context so now it is basically true that's why inside that's why we are inside this particular log and now we will just go ahead and proceed and now here it will just go ahead and call this particular do with retry method here you will see that we have three implementations it will go to retry operations interceptor and here is basically that particular method and here the actual call to that particular method will happen so if we go back over here it will come over here it will go and make the actual call from this particular invocable clone proceed and once we proceed now we are inside this particular external api service so all these things basically happen before we even reach inside our service so all these things are basically traceable over here in the threads 
Now let's try to proceed. Now if you see over here, it came back to retry template. Now it caught this particular runtime exception inside our retry template, right? It came back over here basically. So exception was thrown. So it came back over here in the retry template. Now in the catch block, remember this was actual a method call and in the catch block, it got this particular API is down exception. And here it is trying to hit the back off. So now in the catch block, it is again checking if it can retry now with same retry policy and context. Now it is again true because we can retry and now what it is doing it is saying back off policy dot back off and inside this particular back off what it will have it will have sleep method so if we go inside it it will just calculate the sleep time over here now if you see the sleep time is how much two seconds basically after that it will just say sleepers dot sleep so it will just wait for two seconds before calling the next method invocation now if you see it came back to retry template again and again the cycle is going on so now it again checked if the retry is basically valid again the can retry is valid over here so if you just go ahead and evaluate this particular expression you will see that the value is true that means we can just go ahead and invoke it so it will just go again it will call our method so now we are calling the method again we are inside a method now it will again go back it will again wait for this particular back off now this time again it will try to calculate the sleep time now if you proceed you will see that the sleep time is now 4 seconds because we have given the multiplier now it will wait for 4 seconds and again the cycle will repeat now again we will just go ahead and proceed now we will again make a method call it will again throw error now it will wait for 8 seconds let it wait for 8 seconds there we go so now this is basically the last retry and there we go so this is basically the last retry now and if you see over here this time it came into recovery callback method because now the first condition failed now in this case this particular can retry check actually failed and now it is trying to handle this particular retry so now this time that particular check actually failed and we are trying to handle this particular recovery now it will just go ahead and call the recover method so it will handle the recovery it will just go ahead and try to call the recover method if now if we proceed then you will see we got the response on the console you will see that we got this particular response looks like i did not have this particular debug point on recover method that's why it did not really came over here but at the end it handled this particular recovery method so that is how this particular entire architecture actually works that is how your spring retry actually works internally simple stuff isn't it so again just to reiterate your controller will just call the proxy proxy will delegate the request to your retry interceptor what this guy will do this will check if the end method have any spring retry specific annotation like retryable and it will go ahead and delegate the request to retry template then the retry template will do all the looping stuff it will first check if it can retry it will check based on this backup policy and retry policy after that it will wait for that particular amount of backup it will just go ahead and call that particular method method will throw exception and the loop will go ahead once this particular condition is false it will just go ahead and try to find the recovery method if it finds it will just go ahead and call it otherwise it will just throw this particular exception to controller that is basically the entire flow so that is basically how it works and if you see over here all this is happening inside a single thread so your thread will be blocked until this particular all the operation is completed so that is basically how it works so that is basically all about your spring retry and that was the internal working of your spring retry basically and as i mentioned this particular spring retry actually blocks your entire thread because it will be kind of waiting and this happens in a single thread basically when you actually go ahead and move to microservice architecture there are better options available for example for example resilience 4j library which will handle these things in an effective way that is something we will again look into when we actually jump into microservices but this is basically the fundamental and you can just go ahead and make use of it inside applications which do not really have much load over here so that is basically spring retry internal working that's pretty much it for this particular video. If you like the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to Code Snippet. Share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about Spring Retry internal working. That's it for this video. See you in the next video.